Hey everybody, welcome to today's lecture. Today we're going to be covering DC voltage regulators. So what is a regulator? A regulator is typically found at the end of a power supply. So normally we have something like our transformer. So that takes care of the AC side. And then we go through some kind of a rectifier circuit, whatever it may be. to turn it into DC. So we go from a sine wave into a rectified sine wave and then we go off into some filters which basically takes our rectified sine wave and starts to smooth it out so that it starts to look like a straight line and then that becomes the output. Where we find voltage regulators is typically here. And that makes this our output. So what is the job of a voltage regulator. So here is our regulator circuit and they come in many different forms. What is the job of our regulator circuit? Well once we go from AC to rectified DC to a filtered line and then we finally get to our output we want to make sure that the output voltage is constant. So what does it mean to be constant? Well, let's say we have our 120 volts over here, gets turned into a uh, peak up here at like 17 volts, capacitor is going to charge to uh, minus the 0.7 of a drop, so it's going to charge to something like 16.3 volts, etc. And then the output here will be 16.3 volts, give or take. So now this output is going to go into a regulator. Let's pretend that we wanted a output constantly at 12 volts. So the regulator does two things. The regulator takes in this input, which is slightly larger than the 12 volts we want, and spits out the constant 12 volts. So what it does is it takes in something a little bit higher, spits out something constant. So that's its first job. The second job is to maintain this 12 volts under different conditions. So what are those conditions? Well, let's say we had a load here. Now what would happen if the load changed? So if that load changed, we would end up with a different value of voltage here. So I'm just going to move this light, see if we can get rid of a little bit of a shadow. See if that's any better. Yeah, a little better. Okay, good. All right. So if we have a load sitting here, we want constant 12 volts sitting across it. Now, if we were to try and attempt to do this with just a voltage divider circuit, so let's say we had. 16.3 volts coming over here. We've got a couple of resistors in line here, and then therefore this would be our 12 volts, basic voltage divider law. 
if this was our RL, this value here, 16.3 volts, is fixed. That's coming out of our power supply. So what would happen if the load changed? So if the load changes, that changes this whole voltage divider. And we know the voltage divider, if we looked at RL, so it's RL over RT times the input is equal to our output. So we'll call this V out and we'll call this V in. Where RT is both of those resistors in series. So if something was to happen and we changed our load, our load condition changed. So whether the resistance value went up or the resistance value went down, the actual load itself changes. In this particular case, because the load changes, our voltage divider changes, therefore our V out will change. So it doesn't matter what the uh, value of output is supposed to be, it will just be based on the voltage divider. So there's nothing maintaining this at 12 volts if the load was to change. The other thing is, what if the load remained the same but VN changed? So let's say this was a battery and it started to die. So the value of VN goes down. What's going to end up happening is this value here changes, therefore the V out changes. Again, if this V in changed, there's nothing to maintain V out at 12 volts. It's just based on the voltage divider. So what we need to do is we need to find a device that will actually fit in there and maintain the 12 volts under change of load conditions or change in voltage input conditions. And that's where the regulator comes in. So our voltage regulator's job is to eliminate any flux or fluctuation of this value and maintain 12 volts. Eliminate any fluctuation of this value and still maintain 12 volts. So the idea altogether is to keep the 12 volts constant under any condition. Now, that has its limitations. If VN drops below 12 volts, obviously you're not going to get 12 volts out. So there has to be some difference between these two, but as long as VN is above the V out, theoretically you can maintain this value. Now, another quick little thing before we carry on is this. Loading a circuit. What does it mean to load the circuit? When we are loading a circuit, if we are to increase the load as opposed to decrease the load, what does it actually mean? Think of it like a truck. If you have a pickup truck and you were to put more stuff in the back of the pickup truck, you are increasing the load. If you removed some of the things from the back of the pickup truck, you are decreasing the load. What that translates to is when you are increasing the load. So load goes up. So when the load goes up, the truck has to work harder. When the load goes down, the truck's job is less. Same thing happens in electronics, same circuit or the same concept. When the load goes up, 
that means that the power supply must work harder. So what does work harder mean? It means we have an increase in current. So when the load goes up, it doesn't mean the resistance goes up. It means the load on the supply. So what does the power supply have to do? So when the load goes up, that means the current is going up. Ohm's Law tells you when the load goes up, the resistance is actually falling because that's what increases the current. So when you're talking about loading a circuit or increasing the load of a circuit, what you're not doing is increasing the resistance. You're increasing the current. You're making the circuit work harder. So increasing the load means the value of the load as a resistance value is going down, which causes the circuit to work harder. When you are decreasing the load, that means the resistance value is going up, therefore the circuit has to produce less current and not working so hard. Okay, so again, loading, when load goes up, that means that the current from the supply is increased. When the load goes down, that means the current from the supply is decreased. It is not, by saying load going up, it's not saying I'm putting a larger resistor there. And load going down, it is not saying I'm putting a smaller resistor. So load actually refers to current. How are you making the power supply or the circuit work? You're making it work harder or are you making it work less? All right. So we have a situation where if the load was to change, V out will change. If the V in will change, the V out will change. So again, we want a device to be able to stop that from happening. And that's what we call a rectif oh, excuse me, a regulator. So there's our regulator sitting right there. Its job is to maintain a steady output. If the load was to change, the output remains the same. If the input was to change, then the value of output will remain the same. So the value here, so the value into that regulator, if it was to change, so the output value of our transformer rectifier stuff, if that was to change, feeding into this regulator, if that was to change, the output of the regulator will remain the same. If the load was to change, then that means that the output here will remain constant under different load conditions. So there are two measurements of um, a regulator's job, if you will. One is what they call line regulation. The other is what we call load regulation. So line regulation is the ability of a regulator to maintain the output when the line value or the input changes. Load regulation is the ability of an output to remain constant if we change out the load. So that's voltage regulator. There are many different types of regulators. There are regulators uh, which basically are linear type regulators you normally find them in the TO220 cases, very, very common. Something like a 7805 or a 7905. 7805, the 78 means that this is a positive. 05 means 5 volt regulator. 7905 means that this is a negative 05 5 volt regulator. 
You can get these in five volts, you can get them in nine volts, you can get them in 12 volts, 15 volts, etc., etc., etc. There are also ones that are adjustable. So based on a little feedback circuit, you can actually adjust what the output is. But these are linear, so they very much fit right into here. So if we put in our 16.3 volts, the output over here is going to be, let's say our example was 12 volts, will be 12 volts. The problem with these things is now we have a voltage difference between here and here of 4.3 volts. That 4.3 volts is constant and stays there all the time. When we have current flowing through the device, times power across the device, this thing actually heats up. That's why we have the big heat sink on them. These things are wasting power. So even though they do a real good job of what they do, they're very, very simple and easy to use. Three little pins, pop them into a circuit. They are power wasters. They are inefficient methods of regulating a circuit. So what we've come up with is a solution. We've got a regulator circuit much more complex than this little thing, but the end goal is it's much more efficient at doing its job than um, a regular linear regulator is. These particular things, we find them on what we call switching power supplies. So it's a switching regulator circuit inside a switching power supply. If you remember from our last lesson and we talked about duty cycle and we talked about how um, switching something on and off will actually decrease the value of average value of voltage, that's what we're going to be using. So I'm going to bring in the circuit from the lab. So this circuit is from lab number 10. You saw this at the end of our boost buck converter video. So basically, this whole thing is a switching power supply. So it's a switching regulator circuit. We have a VN. Now, where is the VN going to be coming from? If you look back onto our diagram, it will be here. Okay. So we've gone through our uh, step-down transformer, our rectification, we've gone through a little bit of filtering, and now we are sitting here. That is our input here. Then what we have is the rest of our circuit. You should recognize this as being a uh, buck converter circuit from the last video. So here's our switching device, here's our inductor, here's our capacitor and our load, and here is the diode. If you can't remember how the buck converter works, go back, take another listen or another watch of the previous uh, boost and buck converter video and get a refresher. But the idea is, is our value here comes in so let's say that this was, according to our uh, last example, 16 point something volts, 16.3 volts. And then output here, we want 12 volts. So if you remember from our uh, buck converter discussion in the last video, this transformer is our switching device. It is turned on and off, creating uh, charging and discharging of the coil, topping up the capacitor, and feeding the load. The duty cycle, as we talked about before, the duty cycle of when we switch this on and off determines how much charge this particular coil gets. So the duty cycle of turning this on and off will end up determining how much voltage is present at this capacitor and how much therefore is stuck at our load as V out. 
If we increase the duty cycle, typically we end up with larger values here. If we decrease the duty cycle, we end up with smaller values. This particular circuit has a voltage divider set up here with a pot in the middle. What the pot allows us to do is adjust the duty cycle to get the output at which we require. So what we're going to do is we will set up this circuit. We will power it up, put a V in here. We will then adjust this pot to get the value of voltage that we want here. Okay. So the way that this pot works is it is basically a voltage divider taken off the output. This value is fed into this LM325, 3524 circuit. And what it does is it actually allows or controls the duty cycle. So this is basically um, controls the duty cycle of this switching device. So as this is fed back into here, what ends up happening is out of this particular device, we've got a Darlington pair here. It looks like we are turning this on and off, okay, at a particular rate. So it's feeding the base here um, with a positive or a grounded signal. So therefore turning this device on and off at a particular rate. So therefore a duty cycle. On for so long, off for so long. So we set it all up and we set this for our output, whatever it may be. So in our example here, uh, it was 12 volts. I believe in the lab, you're setting it up for 10. So you're putting 20 volts in in the lab, I believe, and you're gonna get 10 volts out. Once it is set up, the pot remains constant. Okay, so the pot actually remains constant and the value of the voltage here is maintained at 10 volts. So once this is all set up, the duty cycle is set so that this feedback circuit actually pulses this particular switch at a particular rate that will give us our voltage. So in the lab's example, I believe it's 10 volts. So once it's set up, the circuit works as it should. This line here is a constant tap off of the output. Its job is to monitor, to make sure that this circuit maintains the proper duty cycle for our 10 volts. We talked about a couple of minutes ago here, line regulation, load regulation. Again, line regulation is what if there are changes here, this has to adapt. So therefore the output is maintained. Load regulation is what happens if there's changes here, this has to adapt to make sure that we have a constant output. That's what this circuit does. So this circuit here monitors this point. It monitors this point, and when this output point here starts to drift, so that means if the value um, of the output here goes low, so it's supposed to be 10 volts, let's say it starts dropping for whatever reason, this point here will drop in value, It'll be sensed by this circuit. It will then increase the duty cycle to compensate and bring this value back up. If this point was to increase, so instead of 10 volts, let's say it started to go to 10.5, it will be again sensed by this point here. This circuit will then lower the duty cycle, therefore switching this less time on, more time off, 
lowering the value of voltage until it gets back to 10. So this particular circuit monitors the output all the time. It's fed back into this circuit which controls the duty cycle and therefore the switching of this transistor up here. So when we look at this circuit, it does a really, really good job of regulating. It is also very efficient because this device is either on or off. So there's no big power being utilized like in this case. Because remember, if we had large current coming out the load, that large current and this voltage drop is going to create large power. Here, the switch is either on or off. So the large amounts of current that might flow down here is not dissipating power in this device because either the voltage across it is next to nothing or the voltage across it, there is, it's open circuit. So therefore, the current here, large amounts of current that's coming down here to the load, any varying amounts of that current, not going to be dissipating huge power in this device. So it makes this device much more efficient than the little linear ones because you're not dissipating large amounts of power based on your output current. So what we've got is our buck converter with a feedback. The feedback's job is to detect whether or not the output is changing, whether it changes from a change in input, or if it changes because we've increased or decreased the load. So again, increasing the load means more current. Okay, so more current. Decreasing the load means less current. So whatever the reason, this V out here is sensed at this point, fed back. This circuit here decides whether or not the value has gone up, the value has gone down, and therefore adjusts the duty cycle accordingly. So this is the circuit that we're going to be doing in lab number 10. So just give me one second. These are the boards that we had made up. So that is the board there. So there's our switching device. There's our inductor. This is the control. There's the pot. There's our diode and our load is over here and our caps. Okay, so this is the circuit that we're actually going to, or I'll be hooking up and testing in lab number 10. So this is the schematic for it. That's the schematic and that's the actual board. So again, switching device, transformer. There's the pot that does the adjusting for us. Here's our load. Here is the output capacitor. And then this circuit here, okay, that's the one that determines the duty cycle. There's our diode. So this circuit controls the duty cycle and the switching on and off of this will basically regulate the output voltage. So regulating the output voltage. All right, folks. So that's it for lab number 10 circuit. So that is the switching power supply, switching regulator circuit. Hopefully that helps. So until next time, everybody take care. Have a great day.